Hi everyone, I'm Kit. I work at uh, Zyverge with all the other, some of the other folks. And yeah, exactly that. We're just going to keep adding abstractions over other abstractions until we reach the, the sun. Uh, so I have just a couple slides here, uh, mostly to uh, waste precious time. But yeah, oh, I should have said my introductions during this. So yeah, API stuff. We're going to talk about API stuff. And there we go. All right, so it's demo time. We're going to jump right into demo time uh, just after this goes. Oh. OK, we don't have much time. There we go. Perfect. Uh, demos. All right, so let's zoom in real, real big, get all big. So this is currently in its own repo, uh, ZO API, though the intention is to uh, actually, let me do this real quick. Uh, going to open a PR into ZO HTTP. So let me do that. There we go. OK, so they can emerge that later. Um, thank you. Uh, there's just one empty file. It's a thunk. So it will be resolved uh, once I merge this into it. So that'll be done later. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> thank you for the, the clapping. Very pointless. All right, so uh, what is this? So it's an API DSL. From, uh, so, so currently, when you write uh, ZO HTTP apps, you'll use sort of a, a pattern matching syntax. You'll use case expressions and whatnot. Maybe I can go to ZO HTTP real quick. Uh, check that out. Great repo. Let's take a look at an example. Uh, let's go to example, hello world, example, uh, hello world. Where's hello world? Hello world, great. Great, so yeah, you use uh, collect, and then you have a partial function where you match, and they give you these nice sort of semantic readable uh, pattern matching helpers, like this uh, little arrow and different methods and, and so on and so forth. Bang, bang, little rabbit, an angry rabbit, uh, and slashes and whatnot. Uh, there, there are, and that's a great start, but there are some problems with it. Um, one is that it's kind of low level and you're inside of this pattern matching syntax. There's a limited number of things you can do with pattern matching. And also pattern matching has some performance implications because for each of these little special operators, it, ins it allocates uh, potentially tuples and optionals. And if you want your server to be the best in the world and you know, win the uh, vanity benchmarks uh, and also the real world performance benchmarks, but the things that market web servers, um, you want to optimize that decoding as much as possible. That's the thing that happens every request. And uh, you want to make that uh, as minimal as possible. Nice thing about declarative APIs is that you get a, uh, <laughs> this introspectable, opaque representation of what you're going to do. And you can compile that and optimize it ahead of time, especially uh, in this case, because you're building a server generally at the beginning of your application. Generally, you don't, there's no server monad. Uh, you're not generating subservers per request, which is great because that means your entire sort of server, uh, uh, all the request patterns you're going to uh, be matching on are going to be known ahead of time. And you can make some significant optimizations there. Uh, and we have some secret clever ideas to add some additional information. But already uh, in the benchmarks that I could potentially run, uh, it is uh, a great deal faster than this pattern matching syntax. Um, just as is. So let's take a look at the API as it stands today. So um, first you describe these different endpoints. So it's api.get, and this would uh, be parameterized by a path. So here it's slash, oh, I'm hitting the wrong key, uh, slash, <laughs> slash talks. So this would match something like slash talks, you know, localhost 8080 slash talks. And it can also uh, match a query parameter, title. And it's going to try to match a string from this, so uh, you know, a ZO API or something. Uh, and that's optional. So you don't necessarily need to provide that. But if you did provide it, uh, it'll match this. And it's going to return, this API is going to return a list of talks. So th this is kind of very much like defining a trait and traits my API and sort of just defining a method stub. So sort of like all talks is going to get us a list of talk. And maybe there's like an optional um, title filter. This would be an option of a string. So that's kind of the idea of these DSLs. They're sort of the a value version of a abstract method signature. So it's the signature of your API, which is great in and of itself, I suppose, but uh, it's actually useless in and of itself. Uh, <laughs> the point is that we can then interpret these, um, these, these APIs into servers and other things, which we'll get into in a moment. So here is the all users endpoint that's being described, the all users API. There is a, oh, all talks. I, I changed this briefly at the last minute to more accurately represent our domain of a conference here. So pretend this says all talks. 
Uh, in fact, let me quickly vim this up with some, uh, let's do this, it's gonna be, hopefully this doesn't break anything, Sh certainly shouldn't. Talks. Yeah, nothing's gonna break, that was a good idea. Okay, cool, so you can get a single talk. Uh, so this is going to match slash talks, slash localhost or slash whatever, uh, zeoworld.com slash talks, and then some UUID. Uh, so there are these different parsers you can put in here, and maybe it's time I add a type annotation. So this is going to uh, give us parse uh, a, a UUID from the input, and it's going to expect, it's going to return when you call this API an option of a talk. This had no input. Oh, actually it did, it had an option of a string that was from the query parameter, and it will return a list of talks. Okay, so so on and so forth. You can create a talk. So this would be uh, making a post request to slash talks. So the, the standards uh, cruddy restful API. So this takes a create talk type, which so you don't have to specify the UUID. It's just a, a little case class that um, mm -hmm. is going to be used just for the API. And then you can delete talks. Okay. And then what you do is you zip all the APIs together and you get back this APIs type. And that's going to the, the aggregation of all your APIs. We're going to see why this is useful in a second. And then for each of these APIs, so all talks and so on, you define handlers. A handler is basically you call handle on one of these, uh, these APIs, and then you give it a function going from its input type, so all talks had an input type of an option of string, to its output type, which was a list of talks. So we're, did, this option of string represents an optional title filter, and their implementation should be a zero effect that can require any environment, any R parameter, can fail however it wants to, but it has to return a list of talks. So basically we match on that filter. If there is a filter, we call talks.all, and then we uh, map over and filter that list based on the filter, otherwise we just call talks.all. And this is going to get us back a, well, a handler that depends on some talks. Okay, but I'm not actually going to annotate that. Uh, but yes, this, this has its own uh, zero effect, uh, uh, zero environment. Uh, requirement. And then I just do the same thing for all these. So I implement basically an implementation for all talks, implementation for getting a single talk, for creating a talk, and for deleting a talk. And this is just a standard Zio service. So there's a trait here that has all get, create, delete that sort of corresponds to the, the restful routes. There's some accessors for it. And then there's a live implementation that currently is just working off of an in-memory uh, ref. And it also logs some stuff just for, just for fun. Um, and then I have some example talks that I, that I uh, seed it with. So we're gonna see those when I run this in just a moment. Okay, uh, back to Zio world. All right, so I've made these handlers and then I zip them together just as I did the API. And then I start a server, uh, giving it a port, the APIs I wanna serve and the handlers I wanna serve. And then I, I run it. So let me actually run this now. Uh, so I'm gonna just do tilde restart down there, select the right thing, and uh, go over to my local host. And I went to localhost slash talks, and here I have the server giving me the three example talks I have. And if I do talks slash a UUID, it's going to go to uh, just mine. If I do talks question mark title equals, uh, let's say, Zio, it's going to show uh, both of the talks that have Zio in the title. And then I can, well, I can only make get requests from the URL. So for now, we'll just look at these two. We'll look at the delete and post in just a moment. But there's that. Uh, so why sort of do it like this? Why sep separate the APIs from the handlers and have it take both of these? Well, because you can do other things with the APIs. You might want to define many APIs, aggregate them all together, but instead of just creating handlers for them and starting a server, you might also want to, for instance, generate open API documentation. So here I'm going to just currently <laughs> uh, print the schema to the console, and I'm going to run this one more time. Three, I think it's gonna be okay. Didn't break. Oh, did I add a weird, I added a pointless thing there. All right, there we go. Oh, one more time. No pointer exception, that's a lot. Oh, wait, I put this at the bottom. Oh, lazy vals. okay, there we go. So I'm gonna copy paste this for now uh, into this little empty schema JSON file that I have on my desktop, format it to make it pretty. So we get this open API description. I'm gonna open up Postman Canary Sorry for the brightness. And I'm going to import a file, that very schema from my desktop. And we get a Postman whatever collection or whatever weird domain terminology they have in Postman world for, uh, for the Zio world API that I've created. So I have talks, 
I have a get, a post command, and then underneath um, a particular talks ID, there's a get and a delete. So for getting all my talks, it, I can sort of see what that's going to look like. Uh, and I can post, and it even knows the body that I need. So title, description, duration, it fills out some examples there. Uh, for get, I can give it a, a particular ID, and so on and so forth. To have this actually work, I have to quickly go into variables and say localhost 8080 in both of these and save this. And now I should be able to hopefully get all my empty list of talks. That's because I've stopped my server in the background. So let me <laughs> actually do that. Oh, three. All right, let's see. Hopefully this works. Base URL. Oh, and it removed that title filter. That's why it was actually empty. OK, so there they are again in here. And I can now also create talks. So I can create a new talk called Aliquip Laboris Mollet, and it's going to be 999 minutes long. And now if I go back to get and I regenerate this, yes, Aliquip Laboris, whatever that means, is now part of our list. And then I can delete that talk because that's, no one's going to show up to that, and we don't have enough time for that talk today. So I'll delete this. Nope, not Aliquip Laboris, but it's ID. Go here. Delete. Thank you, Postman. Delete. Send. Go back. And it's gone again. Yay. And so on and so forth. So yeah, we, we're deriving this open API documentation from this static AST of our API, which is uh, lovely. And likewise, you can also generate, of course, uh, clients as well. So that's another third interpretation of these. So down here, let me make sure I'm still running my server. I am. I'm able to call on all talks the call method on that API. And I can provide it, you know, it's, it's filter parameter here. This is going to be depending on what the API is. So if I say some Zio and I run this, we should see a list of the two talks that contain the word Zio. So yes, intro to Zio API, this talk, and we have this talk from later today. Uh, and I could swap this over to, uh, you know, just get a particular talk, get talk. But in this case, now I need to provide it a UUID instead of a string. So it's going to give me some compile time safety based on the types that we need. So I'll say UUID from string, and I'll paste this in there, run this again, and we should hopefully get, yeah, just my talk. So we can create servers and clients and open API documentation just from these DSLs. And they're also uh, very fast because we can do uh, optimizations and reduce allocations in, in lots of interesting ways. Uh, and do some other tricks in the future. That's basically it now. The intention is to uh, merge this into Zio uh, HTTP. Uh, uh, there have been some discussions there, but we're going to hopefully improve the API, uh, make it even faster, make it easier to use. Uh, one thing is that, OK, maybe you don't want to define your API. Oh, this is important. <laughs> because we've separated APIs and handlers, which is useful so that you know your server is actually corresponds to the uh, open API documentation that you're publishing. If those go out of whack, that would be weird. So we're making sure that the APIs match the handlers. If we forget to provide a handler, what's going to happen? That would be, that would be bad. Well, let me, let me compile this. It's going to say, oh, missing handler for API, create talk. Oh, oopsies. So there's a bit of macro magic that's going on. Well, I'm, I know that's so tiny. I'm so sorry about that. Let me, um, let me regenerate this. And yes, yeah, so it says missing handler for API, create talk. Uh, and then so, yeah, that's all, it's validated at compile time, essentially, that you don't have extraneous handlers and that you also are not missing any handlers. So if I did the same and removed um, one of these bits from the API, it's going to say, very small down here, extra handler for API create talk. So there's some validation there, which is, I think, a unique feature of this. Um, so yeah, it's basically a Zio first version of something like Tapir, like Endpoints 4S, et cetera. And, and basically, the, the big benefits we're going to get are speed. Because it's Zio specific, because it's built just for Zio HTTP, we can optimize this to a degree that's just not possible if you need to support literally like every HTTP library, like something like Tapir does, which is an amazing library, but we have optimization um, opportunities as well as just ergonomic opportunities for supporting environments and just kind of you know hard coding it to Zio and getting the benefits from that. But yeah, I'm going <laughs> to stop talking now. Thanks everyone. That's everything. Uh, hit me if you have a question.